Okay, everyone. Hopefully we will get some folks showing up here shortly. Um, we're experiencing a few issues. So let me just, uh, this is going to be exciting watching here, but give me just a second. We're going to see if we can't get a few folks showing up. Having problems with the video. Try this link. Okay, we'll see if we get a few folks showing up here pretty shortly. See if that will resolve some of these issues. Just going to notify folks in a couple of other spots. Okay, let's see how this is going here. We have anybody showing up here. Sorry about the delay, everyone. This has been kind of a pain in the rear end. There we go. Okay, so um, A, apologize for all that mess. Uh, I'm not sure what went on there. Uh, YouTube has made this whole process kind of very confusing for me. So 2% law. Anyway. All right. Welcome to the uh, the live Q&A, solo Q&A number one. Um, oh, come back to me. Come back to me. Hopefully everyone's still here. <laughs> okay. So it looks like we've got four viewers now. So huge favor, anyone's on Twitter or Facebook or any of these other social medias, if you wouldn't mind posting for me that there's been a URL change, I would appreciate it. And uh, I've updated both the Facebook group and my blog post accordingly, I believe. But uh, if you haven't, I would appreciate you just letting people know the URL has changed. And going forward, hopefully this shan't be a problem. Gotta love technical difficulties. Okay. So I know we've got uh, Mr. Pleers and Pad 880 Pad here. Um, let me just check one other thing here really quickly, and then I don't believe we should be ready to get going. Control U tab. Um. All right, this is exciting video. I can tell. Well, I, I appreciate everyone joining me while we get this whole thing sorted out. All right. What do we got going on here? There we go. We've got another link on the Pen Habit video. All right. So for those few of you who are in fact here, um, I apologize for the delay. Uh, we're uh, and thank you, Raul, for posting that on <laughs> on the Facebook group. Um, okay. So. We've got four viewers. It's just a small group this morning. Apologize for that mess, and hopefully we'll uh, we'll if we'll be able to get this all sorted out next time. So, all right, welcome. So, this is the first of the solo Q and A's. We'll see how this goes. I have no no illusions how this is going to go. So, it may be a total disaster. It may be fun. Who knows? All right. So. Um, the questions I'm going to ask are questions that have been submitted, and I'll try, do my best to keep on top of the chat as well. So um, I do know I've gotten a bunch of questions just right before the, the first video started, and uh, hopefully we'll get this, um, we'll get through them. I've also got some questions from the older uh, videos that Stephen and Aziza and I did that we never got to, so I may answer some of those questions too. So, in fact, uh, I'm going to give a little bit of precedence to the questions that... I get over and over and over again um, because I think that will be helpful. And I'm going to start a kind of a frequently asked questions link with time codes to the videos for these. So people, if they have questions, I maybe get fewer of the same questions over and over and over again. So 
the first question I get is from Nick Soreen from the blog, and he asks, do you think vintage fountain pens are better than modern fountain pens in terms of ergonomics? Personally, I find ridiculous how often manufacturers are making the pens too short, too thin, too thick with the threads in the wrong position or with very steep changes in diameter. So, um, Honestly, Nick, I kind of have the opposite experience. I find that there are a lot of modern manufacturers that make pens with um, uncomfortable grips or weird threading positions or too short, too thin, that sort of thing. But they make a wide variety of pens. So there's really something out there for everyone. With almost all of the vintage pens that I've used, it's very, very difficult to find larger pens, which are the pens that I find more comfortable. I really only got two vintage pens that I've that I enjoy using on a regular basis. One is this uh, 1940s era um, English made Parker Duofold Senior, which it's a beautiful pen, but pretty comfortable and mostly long enough for me to, to use unposted. I, but I do end up holding it on the threads because I, the barrel is too narrow for me. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay, so good, Hollow. I'm glad. I'm glad you saw this. I'm going to keep it much shorter this time. The other one is the um, Waterman's Ideal Number Seven. Again, about nine and a half millimeters in the center of the section, so a bit narrow for me. So I just really haven't found a lot of vintage pens that are more comfortable than, say, my you know classic pens LB fives. Um, so I, I like the variety of modern pens, um, but I do wish some of them would make slightly better decisions about design and thread placement and that sort of thing. All right. The if you were on a uh, a deserted island question, which I also get quite a bit, um, Raul asked if you had to choose just one pen, ink, and paper combination to use forever, what would it be? Um, I'm going to cheat a little bit and say these two pens are the two pens that I would use forever, but it's the same pen just in different colors. So either one of these would be fine. Um, that is the classic pens LB5. It is my favorite, the favorite pen in my collection. Um, I will be doing a review of those probably in a few weeks, um, and uh, it is it is just my absolute number one favorite pen. Uh, in terms of ink, if I had to pick a single ink, that's kind of an impossible question. It would probably be Pelican Edelstein Topaz, um, or yeah, probably Topaz, just because you know it's a it's a nice blue. I like it quite a bit. Although I am uh, I am rather partial to the Ackermann Shocking Blue, which I've just started um, using a little bit more. That's a really nice blue. It would probably be a blue. Blue is not my favorite ink color, but if I could, had to stick with just one, that would probably be it. Paper, there is no question for me. It's Tomoe River across the board. Oh, hey Michelle, thank you for joining. Sorry about the mix up. We. We had some technical difficulties, and by we, I mean me. You'd never think I worked in the tech industry with all the difficulties I have with these broadcasts. Tech industry doing video, even. So, <laughs> all right. Um, I have never tried the bung box uh, Lamont. Um, I only have two bung boxings. I got them at the DC show. I've got um, Kabayaki Eel and a... Uh, I've got Imperial Purple. I like the Imperial Purple a lot, um, but uh, but I've I've just not tried a lot of the bung box inks. I love the old bung box bottles. These um, kind of vase shaped bottles here. Um, love these bottles. Uh, unfortunately, they're not available in those bottles in anymore, and so they. Um, they come in those the sailor style ink bottles, which I'm not a fan of. Uh, what color is the the bung box Lamont? Um, I'm not I'm not familiar with that that color that name. So, um, Topaz is a good ink. Okay, uh, Hollow asked in the chat of the old video, <laughs> the one that wasn't working. Uh, did you create the symbol slash logo of the pen habit or did you convey your ideas to an illustrator? So, um, Hollow, I used um, I used the Fiverr. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the website Fiverr. Um, I basically said I want something that combines fountain pen nibs and the biohazard symbol. 
Uh, he sent me a couple of instances back and then I paid extra for all of the vector files and stuff like that. So I think it, I, I, I hired someone to do it cause I'm not great with graphic design. Um, I think he did a great job. I actually really like the, the design quite a bit. So I've been using it a lot and I'm in the process of changing artwork on YouTube channels and Facebook channels and I'm redesigning the blog behind the scenes and that kind of thing. So I wanted to get that out and start using it more. Uh, looks like the, uh, Super shady purple, Le Mans, the Lamont uh, ink. So that that looks like one I might have to give uh, give a try. Um, Susan on Facebook asked, "I enjoy, but I'm overwhelmed at the sheer number of different pens on the market. My budget does not allow me to become a collector. I clean monthly and use daily each of my four pens: a Monteverde Prima, Twisby 580, Lamy All Star, and a Sailor 1911 standard size. I love each one." Can you think of a particular pen or mechanism that I don't have, but you think I might enjoy in this price range? Um, so there is, uh, there are a lot of pens in the price range between a Sailor 1911 and a Lamy All-Star. If you haven't, I would look at trying a Faber-Castell Loom. It's one of my favorite pens in the 50-ish dollar price range. I really like the Pilot Prera. Um, uh, I really like the, um, the platinum 3776, especially if you get one of the, either the demonstrator or the, the, the one with the blue, the Chartres blue or the Burgoyne red. Um, I, I like those quite a bit. Um, so I would, I would try one of those perhaps, um, a pilot custom 74 would be a good one to try. Um, and if you wanted to, the, the things you don't have right now are either a vac filler, it looks like, or a piston filler. Well, you've got the, the Twisby 580, so you do have a piston filler. Um, you might want to look at a vac filler like a vac mini um, or a Twisby vac 700. Um, and if you wanted a slightly higher end piston filler, something like the um, Lamy 2000 would be a good option. Uh, and then if you like color, Look at something from Edison because they've got some good color in, in their pens. So um, Dimitri asked both in the chat and via email, what is my favorite nib size as in fine, medium, broad, double broad, flex, etc.? cetera? Um, and what usage do you recommend for each? So I don't, I don't have, I'm not one of those people who loves the um, Hola Mexico, Mexico, um, yeah, I can't, I can't, I'm too far away from my screen. I can't read your username. My old eyes are getting a little, little fuzzy. Um, uh, the, so I don't, I'm not one of those people who loves the super wide, juicy, broad, you know, stubby type nibs. Um, it's, uh, I use my pens to write. I have a, you know, and I use seven millimeter lined paper to write with. So a lot of those broad, double broad, I can't use for taking notes. It's just for just playing with your pens. Those nibs are a lot of fun, but I don't ever just sit down and play with my pens. I just, I, I use them a lot. So I like flex nibs. I'm, but I only, I only use them rarely. Um, I've only got a couple I only use them rarely. Now, I do have a couple of nibs that are flexible that I use for daily writing, but they work really well for daily writing. Mediums are my nib of choice for day-to-day -day writing and, and have been since I started. I've tried as low as extra fine. I've gone as high as double broad. Um, for me, mediums are are the kind of the sweet spot right in the middle, which you could suspect from the name. Um, so I, I use them daily because I figure with mediums, you get to see more of the ink characteristics. They're a little bit wetter. You get a little bit more juiciness, um, but they're not so big that, you know, my letters start running together and the, the loops in the E start getting filled in and things like that when I write for day to day. So um, I don't really care for for stub nibs or italic nibs that much. I do have one italic I love. It was custom ground for me by Mike Masayama. Um, and I um, have really started getting into obliques um, because of the way I hold my pen and kind of rotate the pen. I've really been getting into oblique nibs quite a bit. And I find that if I want that line variation of a stub, 
I'll pick an oblique, but for the most part, the great majority of my pens are mediums, um, and uh, and I enjoy them. I go broads on any Japanese pens, though, because they tend to be a little too too fine for me. Uh, Rob in the chat room asked, I'm thinking about picking up one of the Ackermann inks. Are there any you would suggest? So, Rob, in the chat room, you got uh, recommendations of both, both Vorhut Violet and Shocking Blue. Uh, both of those are excellent inks, and I own them. Uh, I, I have yet to find a an Ackermann ink that doesn't work really well. Um, I have a really interesting, um, the, I think it's number 28. Let me... So I only have five Ackermanns. I've got Shocking Blue. Treve Turquoise is my favorite, though. Um, if I had to pick one, it would be the number 11 Treve Turquoise. Um, I have um, Simplicity's Violet, Vorhut Violet, Shocking Blue, and the number 28 Hofgvortier Green, um, which is a really bright kind of apple green color. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's... Um, it's it's a really nice ink. They all behave very, very well. But if I had to pick one for you, it would be the Treve Turquoise. Um, yeah, I have uh, a Mike Masayama medium stub in my Franklin. Let's see. I don't. Oh, I do have it in here. Um, I have to find it, though. In my Franklin Christoph Model 19, I originally got a, a medium cursive italic, but it was too sharp for me. So I sold that and got a medium stub in this nib, and I like that quite a bit. Really great nib. I don't have any of Mark Bacchus's grinds yet. Although when I was at the Seattle Pen Meet yesterday, um, uh, Tanya brought along a Mark Bacchus nib. It's an italifine, so it's in a medium italic on one side. Yeah, fun might not be the right word, <laughs> Pascal. Uh, yeah, I think speaking is one word. Butchering would probably be more accurate. Anyway, the italifine, it's its a medium on one side, a medium metallic on one side, and then you flip it over and it's a fine on the other side. And it wrote really well on both sides, so it'll be fun. Uh, I am not going to the Philly Pen Show. I'm kind of limiting myself both budget-wise and time-wise to two a year. So I am going to be at the LA show in February, and I will probably I'm probably going to bounce back and forth between LA and and um, DC for both of those uh, for those two shows because I just I don't have enough time to go to all the shows. Philly is a really far way away from me um, from where I am here. If there was one that was local to me, like there's a very small like half day. And I wouldn't even not sure I call it a show, but a half day meetup in Portland, which is about three hours away. I'll probably go to that as well. But um, I, I just can't do work wise and money wise. I can't do these big pen shows. I spend so much money at these shows. I, I have to restrict myself a little bit. Um, so hot, mm, yummy tea. As I was saying earlier, Guangzhou milk oolong. Perhaps the best tea ever made by nature and mankind. Love this tea. Get it from whistlingkettle.com. I am not affiliated. I just really, really, really love it. Um, okay, let's go back to the questions here. Uh, Nick Soreen asked um, on Twitter, or I'm sorry, no, I'm, I'm looking at the wrong, the wrong question. Uh, I did get a question on Twitter. I forgot to write down who it was from. Um, do you have an idea of a green ink that doesn't feather? I bought Noodler's Bad be bad Green Gator. It was terrible. Have you heard of problems with Bad Green Gator or other, other Noodler's Greens? Um, I actually only had a sample of Noodler's Green. That's the actual color. And that's the only green from Noodler's that I have, I've ever used. Um, so I don't have a lot of experience with their green inks. Um, this kind of goes back to a question I had a little bit earlier in the um, in the chat room. What's your favorite green? So it's CC, C, 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 I'm sorry, I don't even know how to pronounce your username. I'll just call you CC for now because I can't figure it out. Pronunciation and I, we're not friends. We don't get along. Um, so green inks for me. You know, I've said oftentimes I love green inks. So some of my, my I think Mont Blanc, Irish green is probably my single favorite green. Um, I love it a lot. It's a great, great green color. It's very, very well behaved. 
Um, I find myself really liking the gold greens a lot. So I've both the Rora and Klingner Alt Gold Grun and the Quizzy Iron Gall uh, Green Gold is fantastic. I actually have really gotten into the Quizzy Iron Gall Green Number One as well, which is a permanent green, which is kind of cool. Um, don't see a lot of those. Pelican Edelstein Aventurine is a really nice green. Caveco Palm Green is really nice. If you're looking for a brighter green, Private Reserve Spearmint is really nice. Um, and um, Diamine Sherwood Green, if you like a dark kind of foresty green color with a little bit of blue undertone, Diamine uh, Sherwood Green is probably... I'd say if I had to pick one, it would be Mont Blanc Irish Green. But number two, and it would be a very, very close number two, would be a Diamine Sherwood Green. I really like those greens a lot. Um, so those are uh, those are, are my favorite greens. I also have a bottle up here of this discontinued uh, Carandash Amazon. This is a really cool green too, but you can't find it anywhere. And so um, I almost never use it. And then I found this at my grandmother's house. She passed away back in July and she's a hoarder, but I found this. This is a vintage bottle of Pennet ink from... Uh, Sanford's Pennant Ink, little itty bitty tiny bottle of green ink. So it's uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, Evil Cobb asks, have you had any problems with the Twisby Vac Mini? Uh, I just barely got the Vac Mini on Friday morning. I inked it up. I'm going to be doing a review, recording a review next week. It'll be out probably the week after. I have not. I have really, really enjoyed this pen. Uh, much more than I thought I was going to. Um, it's probably the best Twisby nib I've ever used. Um, so I, I would say, no, I haven't um, had any problems with it. I know others have. Uh, maybe I'm just lucky or maybe they've been unlucky. I don't know. But um, I've purposely not been watching other reviews because I don't want my opinions to be colored by other people's. I want to give it a fair shake kind of on its own ink or on its own uh, not on its own ink. Give it a fair shake on its own merits. Um, I have not used that ink from my grandmother's house. I have read online that that ink can be kind of hard on some pens, and um, there's not much of it left in the bottle. I mostly like the bottle. You know, I think the bottle itself is kind of cool, just that uh, cut glass. Um, and you can see there's like pigment kind of dying or uh, stuck up at the top. So there's not much left in here. I also found a, a little red one that's basically empty. It's got a couple of little dried pigment things in the corner that, but yeah. So there you go. All right. Um, Austin sent me an email about an interesting pen uh, or about an interesting uh, question. He said, I love Conway Stewart pens, as do I, and I'm really curious about your opinion of the Conway Stewart pens that are still being assembled by third parties that bought up the remaining stock of bodies, nibs, etc. when Conway Stewart went under. For example, I see lovely pens on bespokebritishpens.co.uk and they seem, in most cases, to have boxes and booklets and original nibs. Do you think these Frankensteins, or as they are often called Frankenpens, uh, cobbled together from the leftover remains of a dead company, have the appeal of a vintage Conway Stewart pen? Do you think they would hold their value less? I feel like I, I'd be just as happy writing with one as it seems to be uh, authentic parts across the board, and I buy to use more than to collect, but it's better not to buy foolishly. Um, <clears throat> so I would... Uh, so I, I've my one of my favorite pens. It was I think my one of my top five. My first year is this Conway Stewart Wellington in the Dartmoor finish. It's the first Conway Stewart I ever bought. I loved it. Um, this was a modern Conway Stewart pen, not a vintage Conway Stewart pen. Um, but uh, the vintage pens, you know, I have a hard time calling anything vintage that's younger than I am, especially if it's only two or three years old. Um, my vintage pen Conway Stewarts are right here. So this is a Conway Stewart 14 and a Conway Stewart 24, both of which are for sale on penhabit.com, by the way. Um, and, uh, but yes, I love this pen a lot. 
in terms of buying a Conway Stewart from parts uh, from a bespoke maker, things like that, who assemble them and sell them after the fact, uh, I can't speak to value only to say I would never, ever, ever buy a pen with the intent of having it hold its value. Uh, much like driving a car off, a pen is a depreciating asset if you use it. Um, the only way it will ever be an appreciating asset is if you don't use it. So I wouldn't worry about it holding its value too much. It's a lot like a car. Um, and in that respect, the instant you you drive it out of the showroom, AKA ink it up for the first time, it loses half its value. Um, so if, if you're interested in it, I'd say go for it. I'm actually, I went and looked at the website. I'm kind of interested because there's a couple of models of the Conway Stewart that I wanted to try but never got a chance to. Now I will say this, Conway Stewart, the modern Conway Stewart nibs are renowned for having problems. They did not do a good job with their nibs. Almost every modern nib of theirs I've tried was had baby's bottom like you wouldn't believe or was ground really weird. I had to send this one off to Mike Masayama to have him fix it. Um, that was back when the company wasn't open or was still open. So they actually covered the cost of it and I didn't have to. Um, if you buy a pen that has an original Conway Stewart nib on it, that I think Bach made Conway Stewart nibs, if I'm remembering correctly, um, just know that there's a really good op possibility you're going to have to send that nib in to have work done or you're going to have to do the work yourself. So um, in terms of an, an investment, I wouldn't really highly recommend it. Um, in terms of a good writing experience, a solidly made pen, yes, with the caveat that the nib might need a little bit of work. Um, or you could do what I did and have, so here's my Conway Stuart Wellington here. I keep hitting the microphone, is my my Scriptorium Pens tribute to a Conway Stewart Wellington uh, made with Conway Stewart acrylic. So Renee um, Meeks from Scriptorium Pens made this pen for me. I sent her photos and measurements of my my Wellington and she had some rod stock from of classic green acrylic by Conway Stewart. It's their, their acrylic. So she made a pen for me uh, with basically the same uh, models and the nib on that pen is just it's really really good okay um so that's where i am with that any other oh um hollow in the the uh chat room asks how about creating some lists like your top three blue top three red top three green inks and having them permanently linked on the penhabit.com um, I will probably do that at some point. There are just only so many hours in the day. That will probably be more like a, a summertime experience when I'm on hiatus from making videos. Because right now, almost all of my time is spent on either recording the videos, writing the reviews, taking the photos, taking the B-roll, editing the videos, publishing the videos. So it's, that takes up so much of my time from week to week. Writing extraneous blog posts or pages is... Uh, yeah, there's just a lot. And and I'd, I'm not sure I'd be able to pick a top three from some of these colors. I've got so many. I've got a, I, I passed the 150 bottle mark over the holidays, um, mainly because, uh, I don't know if you can see, where are they? Oh, they're, they're kind of hidden up here, but uh, we, we now have, we, we have Shimmertastic people. Shimmertastic is in the house. Even though I said I wasn't going to be buying any more inks, we know how long that usually lasts with people. So, uh, Jen on the blog a while back, this was back when we were doing um, videos with, when I was doing a video with Stephen and Aziza, um, but she posted it on my post, so I'm gonna answer it. She said, at what point do you think a pen gets a bit overrated for its price? Certain ones for me immediately jump the shark, but there are some on the cusp of what I wouldn't pay for a pen that make me wonder if stepping up my game spending game is worth it. Say, for instance, I don't ever plan to spend more than $700 on a pen, but then there's that $750 one that really makes my heart skip a beat. At what point do you think a pen gets to be more hype than substance? Um, if there was... Um, <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm just reading the chat room here. Um, Evil Cobb, I would love to hire some help. I just need to make about 10 times more money on my blog and YouTube channel than I do currently in order to hire help. Um, anyway, uh, so 
at what point does a pen become overrated? Basically, the instant it become it comes out of the factory. Fountain pens, while great tools, and they are great tools, and I love them. Nothing about them is evil or easy. Sorry, there is a little bit about them that's evil. Uh, nothing about them is easy. Nothing about them is convenient. Nothing about them is super cheap, with a couple of minor exceptions. Um, I think most fountain pens over ten or fifteen dollars are uh, is are, are they're really you're buying more than just a writing instrument. You're buying quality of manufacture, you're buying rarity of materials, you're buying a name, you're buying a design. So is there a, a hard cutoff line at which going above that is a waste of money? Not really. If you want to look at it from a strictly economic standpoint, a pen is only worth, and I've said this several times, a pen is only worth what you're willing to pay for it. Um, I have pens, I have, you know, $50, $60 pens that I like a lot. I have $800 pens I almost never use. Um, so it just depends on what do you like and is it worth it to you? Um, so I used to have a, a hard limit in my head. And I, I write about this. I'm, I'm writing the review for the Twisby Vac Mini right now. Um, and I write about this in that review. I, I said, when I bought the Twisby Vac Mini, it was the first commercially produced pen I'd ever bought. It was $85 at the time. And I thought for sure that was the most money I would ever spend on a pen. I even remember, I, if I looked it up in my journal to make sure. I wrote in my journal with that pen, I can't imagine ever buying another pen after this. Now, keep in mind, it was like the fourth pen I'd ever purchased. I just have one thing to say to that. Yeah. Um, and then for a long time, it was, I'm never going to spend more than $500. And then I remember doing a video a while back saying, I can't ever imagine spending more than $1,000. I only have two pens in my collection that cost more than $1,000. There are these two pens right here. Um, but these to will probably be the only ones in my collection that ever cost over a thousand dollars. And I, I know by saying that I've probably just cursed myself, but as you spend more time in the hobby, you begin to understand what you like and what you appreciate about pens. And, you know, there's been a lot of talk going around about this. I've talked about it several times, especially in a couple of recent videos, but once you know what you like, the the need and the desire to acquire 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 starts to go away and i bought these two pens because they spoke to me on a a soul level you know these pens i pull them out and these feel like they are an extension of me as a person um most thousand dollar plus pens i've purchased or i've looked at i've not purchased anymore um i would never it's just they they don't talk to me. They're they're not worth the price tag. Um, I still kind of hover around the five hundred, six hundred, seven dollar, seven hundred dollar range for any high end pens that I want to buy because I think most of the stuff I want I can find in that price range. And going above that is is overkill. That being said, I don't put a hard limit on it. I just kind of go with my gut. Um, and in, in recently, I mean, I haven't purchased a pen since the DC show in August um, uh, for myself. Any pens that I have purchased have been strictly for review to be sold after the review is over or given away or, you know, um, borrowed from people. Um, because I feel like in my personal collection, I have all the pens I could ever want or need. That won't last. We all know it won't last, but there it is. Um Rob in the chat room asked, is there an ink you hoard? Yes, Rob, there is. And it's a discontinued ink. And I have eight bottles of it. Thank you to very many generous people. It is the Carandash Grand Canyon, my favorite brown color of all time, bar none. There is no other brown that compares for me. Um, I have three at home. I've got one at my parents' house in Utah and four at my office. Um, I found some 
<coughs> excuse me, I found some. Uh, Stephen and Aziza found some for me at La Cron de Combe, I think, when they went there. Uh, Eve uh, from my sponsor, Penworld, found some in his stock, and he sent those to me. So I've got I've got a bunch of, of the uh, the ink. It's really quite quite wonderful. And I, I wasn't using it because I only had two bottles at one point. And I was like, I don't want to use it up yet. I don't, I don't want to use it up. So I wasn't using it. Um, so I ended up now that I have eight bottles, I'm like, I get to use my Grand Canyon again. So I suspect it'll be a race between this particular bottle of Grand Canyon. I can tell this is the one I'm inking from because it's got a label on the top. This particular bottle of Grand Canyon and um, uh, what was I saying? I don't remember. It's It's been one of those Saturdays <laughs> or Sundays. See, see there you go. Uh, so uh, other inks I would hoard if I could. I adore Mont Blanc, Leonardo da Vinci Red Chalk, and Honoré de Balzac, Dandy Turquoise. I think those two are some of the most wonderful inks Mont Blanc has ever made. Um, I have two bottles of each of them. I love both of them. Um, but those those are the only other two I would hoard if I could, but I don't go out of my way to find those two inks because, I mean, do I really need any more ink? No, no, I don't. <coughs> All right. Well, thank you for sticking around. It's been a, a relatively light group in the in the live viewing in the chat room this time around, mainly because of, I think, the difficulties we had on the live chat. So uh, what I would recommend to anyone who is watching this after the fact, uh, if for any reason you go to the, you try to go to the video and it doesn't work, the link I publish ahead of time doesn't work, Try heading over to penhabit.com or the Facebook group or Twitter and uh, seeing if there's a new link. Or you can just go to youtube.com slash penhabit, and usually that video will show up right there on the top. So let me just check through the, I think I've got an, ah, Pascal asked on Facebook, if you had to stick with one brand of fountain pens, which one would it be? Um, uh, so I think if I had to pick a brand right now it would it would probably be classic pens Ugh, yeah but that's just because you know that's the classic pens lb5 and the classic pens lm1 all three of them are spectacular pens they're gorgeous beautiful wonderful to look at use fantastic pens um but, you know, that's one of those, if you had to pick one pen, this is the pen to use. Um, assuming that brand isn't available because it's, you know, that's a really hard brand to track down. I think I would probably have to stick with Omas for as long as they continue to exist. Um, uh, yeah, Omas, I, I've got, I've only got two Omas pens anymore. I've got the Brown Arco Ogiva, which is... Um, was my t number one pen of season two. And I picked up the green Arco Paragon from uh, from the DC show in August. So those are the only two Omases in my collection right now. I've got my eye on another Omas that I'll probably pick up at the LA show if I can find it. I'm not gonna tell anyone what it is because then it will disappear. Um, and then, then it will disappear and reappear on uh, on eBay at three hundred dollars above the the regular asking price. So, I'm keeping my mouth shut on that one. Um, but I would probably have to pick Omas for for my my brand to stick with if Classic Pens wasn't available. And assuming Omas goes out of business, uh, Pelican probably. I, I do like my Pelican M eight hundreds a whole bunch. Um, so yeah, there you go. Okay, just thinking, I think that is all the questions I have on for this week. So next time I do this, um, I will try to uh, announce it a little bit more in advance, get some other questions as well. Any other questions in 
um, in the chat room while you're here for the for the few folks who are, are joining us in the chat room. Uh, while while questions are coming up, hey Bruno, welcome. Um, I got the broad nib in the Vac Mini, and it is spectacular. It's it really it's juicy, it's wet. I was shocked at how quickly I went through that reservoir of ink. I inked it up with Emerald of Shavor, and it just poured out that pen in the best possible way. So, uh, yeah, really, really nice broad nib. <laughs> yes, Luke did get the treats. He, if you don't know what I'm talking about on Instagram, I've been having this running saga. I bought this horseshoe shaped toy that has kind of a, a bar that runs along the inside of the horseshoe. Um, and these little rings go onto that bar that have our treats. Luke spent about 12 hours just staring at the thing and then looking at me and staring back and looking at me and, uh, it just tickled me to no end. So I had this running thing on, on, uh, Instagram. So yes, he finally got the treats at about hour 13. Um, now it only takes him just out of curiosity. Now he's learned how to do it. It only takes him about half an hour to get those treats off, which is still pretty good for him because he, um, he, he just goes through those like crazy. Um, so, uh, what brand of, Rob asked, what brand of journals do you prefer? Right now, I am using a um, Seven Seas Writer notebook from Nanami Paper, which is a Tomoe River journal. I think it's got something like 380 pages in it. It's, it's really nice. Um, I like Tomoe River Paper. It's not the best in the world for journaling just because the dry times are so long. So usually at the end of the page, I have to sit there and fan it or blot it out or something like that before I can flip and write on the back side of the paper. You could get around that by just not writing on the back side of the paper. Um, but, uh, but there you go. The other journals that I'm finding myself drawn to a lot, especially if I'm writing fast and want to be able to turn the page quickly, are the Franklin Christoph journals. Uh, their A5 journals lay completely flat. Uh, their, A, their A4 journals do too. I just find them to be too big. A5 lay completely flat, good um, absorbent paper, but I don't have, uh, I'm, I don't feel like I'm um, no bleed through or show through really. It's really good absorbent paper, very little feathering that I've been able to see. So I feel like Franklin Christoph's sugarcane paper is really, really good for journaling. So um, I've got three or four of those still in their plastic wrap that I bought from a mass drop deal a while back that once I get through my seven C's writer, that's probably where I'm going to go. If you're looking for something hardbound, like really professionally, beautifully hardbound, uh, I would recommend the paper for fountainpens.com journals. Uh, beautiful binding. I mean, it's one of the best bound journals I've ever seen. It's kind of the way they bind a book in the library. Yeah. Like Michelle says in the chat room, must use all the pages. Um, with when I, it's funny when I write letters with Tomoe River, I don't use the back of the paper. Um, just I, I never have. I, I don't care to do that. Um, but on the journal, for some reason, I always do. And I do like that they've printed lines on the journal. Um, the more I use, the more I write with fountain pens, the less interested I am in blank paper or dot grid paper. I use a dot pad for my reviews because that's what I've always used and I just like to keep it consistent, but I don't use dot grid for anything else anymore. It's lined journals all the way for me. So, um, okay. Well, um, I think that will do it for questions. Uh, I will just give you a heads up on things that are coming on penhabit.com and on the YouTube channel. Uh, first of all, if you don't follow on social media, please do. Chances are, if you found me here, you do, because that's basically the only way you would have been able to find your way here. Um, uh, I am looking at putting together, uh, lo looking at offering some items for sale on penhabit.com. Um, one of the things I'm looking at is, and I posted a picture of this over on Instagram, is a currently inked journal. So it's a, it's a, this one's for my Midori Traveler's Notebook, but it's just got a list of, um, get the lighting on here, of whatever pen is currently inked and the date that it was uh, inked and uninked. And it's got, in the back, it's got pages to keep track of, you know, 
what I've purchased, that sort of thing. So I've I've put together some prototypes. I may offer those prototypes for sale up on the web just to see if if people like them, if people want them. Um, so I'm, I'm looking at offering a line of fountain pen friendly inserts for Midori Traveler's Notebooks um, or, or that sort of thing. Um, so I'm looking at doing that. I've got, uh, I'm going to be getting some samples from a printer to see if the paper holds up to fountain pen ink. If not, I may have to take a slightly more labor intensive approach and buy, like buy. This one is made from um, Claire Fontaine triumph paper i actually ripped the sheets out of a, a pad of triumph one at a time um that's way too labor intensive for me to, to do myself um so we'll I'll, I'll take a look at that as well but I'd, I'd like to have a currently inked log a line of currently inked logs um in there and excuse me maybe a pen spend log as well so um i'm looking at doing some of that i've got some great reviews coming up including they're they're getting long my reviews are getting a little too long so i'm going to be working on ways to try to cut them down going forward but the next two are probably the longest two reviews i've ever done one is of the edison menlo a beautiful pen that i picked up at the dc show um and the other one see if i've got it here with me nope that's not it is a Sean Newton creation, the Sumter. Uh, beautiful pen, green ebonite and ivory celluloid. Has a, a real interesting personal story for me. Um, so that will be coming up over the coming week as well. Um, I've got a kind of a rant slash blog post planned about flex nibs. Um, so we've got some of those coming up. And then other reviews, I've got the Twisby Vac Mini, the Classic Pens LB5 will be coming up soon. Um, I've got another custom pen that will be coming up, and, a, and it will be given away. It was made specifically to give away, so that's going to be a really great one. So uh, I've got a review of the Italics Parsons Essential coming up soon as well, because I've been getting a lot of requests for that one. Um, and then I've got some ideas for T-shirts and logos, and you know, using the Pen Habit logo. I've got a uh, a, a couple of fun ideas that I'm tinkering around with as well. So, uh, yeah, so that's what's been going on in the pen habit world. Hopefully, if any of you guys are going to be at the L.A. show, I will get a chance to run into you there. I plan on being there. I have set myself a budget. We'll see how many hours it takes me to go past my budget. The Pelican M1000 review has been recorded. It has not been edited yet. Excuse me, I've got got hiccups here. Uh, it has not been edited yet, so that will be coming soon. Um, and uh, we'll we'll have some more giveaways. I've got a, another one of the paper blanks journals. I'll be doing some reviews of Knockco cases, and uh, yeah, lots and lots of stuff. The the plan right now is to I get asked this fairly frequently as well. The plan right now is I'm going to be doing videos through the end of May, then I'll take another hiatus and probably pick up back in October so I can recuperate and uh <laughs> recuperate and uh, that sort of thing and someone asked why the nick or why the the username dr chumley dr chumley which i use on instagram uh it is the name of a character that i played in high school uh in the the play harvey uh the the psychologist who's who is uh working with uh I think it's Edwin Dowd. Is that his name? Dowd uh, is his name is Dr. William Chumley. So that's where the the name came from. And uh, yeah, so lots and lots of good stuff coming. And uh, we'll stay tuned. And you know, please allow me to uh, do the. If you love any extra little financial support, you can send my way via PayPal, Patreon, Venmo. Just you know. I even like the, the nice words. So if you ever feel like uh, helping a little bit, uh, that would that would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Uh, I have been to Spain, P880 pad. Uh, I worked on a cruise ship for seven months as a dancer. And so I've been to Cadiz and uh, Alicante, Barcelona, um, Pintu. Uh, Sevilla. Uh, so I've been to, I've been to a few places. I've never been to Madrid though. That was uh, that was one spot we did not stop along the way. So we we stopped at several ports along the the Spanish coast. So, all right. Well, it is 
noon now and I have to go to the grocery store and get my shopping done before the Seahawks game is over and it gets crazy. So uh, thank you for joining me on this very cool, rainy Sunday morning. It's Seattle, so of course it's cool and rainy. And, uh, uh, and I will see you all here. Uh, oh, Melanie, really quickly. Fozzie, Kermit, Animal, and you can't see him, but uh, Gonzo as well, because I am a huge, huge Muppets fan. I heart them. Um, good to see you. Good to, to hang out with you here. Next time, we'll do a better job of advertising and get this working correctly beforehand. And we will see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Thank you so much for watching and joining in. Until next time.